Hi, welcome to Digging to China. I'm Dong Shang. Thank you for tuning in. Your support means the world and plays a crucial role in the YouTube algorithm. Liking, sharing, and subscribing not only show your support but also help YouTube recommend my videos to a broader audience. Thank you very much. Today, let's discuss Japan. Recently, two significant events have taken place in the country. The first is the passing of the renowned manga artist Mr. Akira Toriyama. The second event is the decision by Japan's central bank to increase interest rates, marking the end of Japan's prolonged era of negative interest rate policy. Although these two events may appear unrelated at the first glance, I believe that every social, economic, and cultural phenomenon is inherently interconnected. Hence, in my perspective, there exists an underlying relationship between these two incidents. Today, let's explore the intrinsic connection between them. Indeed, economic phenomena inherently possesses cultural attributes, while cultural and social phenomena carry certain economic traits. The two are interconnected. Chinese media often present a narrow perspective when discussing Japan, typically portraying it as enduring prolonged hardship and a crisis following the burst of the economic bubble, painting a picture of widespread suffering. However, in reality, Japan boasts one of the world's highest levels of national quality, and its economic development remains remarkably stable. Despite economic challenges, Japan has not experienced a significant social upheaval or revolution in recent years. It continues to rank among the world's most developed countries and remains a favored tourist destination for many Chinese travelers. Following the collapse of Japan's economic bubble, it transitioned towards a different economic model, one rooted in cultural and soft power. Surprisingly, this facet receives minimal attention from Chinese media outlets. Let's delve into this topic today. Let's begin by using the termination of the negative interest rate policy as a starting point to discuss the transformation of Japan's economic structure. In March 2024, the Bank of Japan made headlines by terminating its long-term negative interest rate policy and initiating a gradual interest rate increase. While this development garnered a significant media attention, most coverage centered around the potential implications of the rate hike on the Japanese economy. This marked the Bank of Japan's first interest rate hike since 2007 and signaled the formal end of Japan's era of extended ultra-low interest rates. Currently, most financial news media outlets are debating whether the end of negative interest rates signifies Japan's emergence from the era of low growth. However, we don't intend to focus on this aspect because such viewpoints from the media are quite generalized, often treating Japan as just another economy with a universally applicable economic model. However, this perspective is overly mechanistic and overly simplistic. In reality, Japan's economy is not entirely as portrayed by the media, which tends to depict it as having fallen into a dire situation of an aging society and a prolonged stagnation after the burst of the economic bubble. Following the 1990s, Japan's economy experienced a pivotal shift. The Japan widely acknowledged today largely evolved after the bursting of the economic bubble. In fact, the post-bubble Japan has gained greater respect internationally, notably in terms of its soft power and cultural prominence. It has emerged as a distinct cultural force on the global stage. This transformation is characterized by two key periods, the 1990s and the 2000s. We draw a distinction around the year 2000, marking the period from 1990 to 2000 as one phase and the year following 2000 as another. These phases symbolize significant economic, social, and cultural changes for Japan after the bubble economy era. Recognizing this distinction is paramount. Typically, conventional news media may not possess the capacity to delve into such nuances. Today, let's examine the trajectory of the Nikkei stock average, specifically spanning from the 1950s to the present, providing a long-term perspective. 
it's observable that following its peak in the 1990s, the Nikkei stock average exhibited a downward trend for nearly a decade and a half. This decline was evidently influenced by the burst of the economic bubble. Since around 2010, shortly after the eruption of the subprime mortgage crisis and the initiation of global quantitative easing measures, the entire Nikkei stock average began to reverse its course. It shifted from historically low levels to embark on an upward cycle. Today, it has reached historical highs surpassing 40,000 points. This implies that overall returns have multiplied several times over. After the burst of the economic bubble in the 1990s, both the Nikkei stock average returns and the government bond yields experienced a decline. Meanwhile, high dividend stocks in Japan saw an increase, leading to a significant divergence between dividend yield and Nikkei's cumulative returns after the 2000s. This suggests that investing in the Japanese stock market has been lucrative over the past 25 years. Before the subprime mortgage crisis, price returns were modest, but dividend yields were high. However, post-crisis, stock prices surged long-term, enabling investors to benefit from both price appreciation and dividend yields. When comparing Japan to its neighbor China, the contrast is a stock. Even after the burst of the economic bubble and the during period of economic downturn, Japan's financial investment returns have consistently surpassed those of China. Despite Chinese language media depicting post-bubble Japan as exceptionally tragic, Japan's financial markets continue to serve as channels for wealth accumulation during this time, offering ordinary Japanese citizens long-term opportunities for financial growth. In contrast, China's financial markets, despite periods of rapid expansion, still fall far behind Japan in this regard. Another aspect to consider is the internal transformations within the entire Japanese stock market during its shift from decline to ascent. Analyzing the most profitable industries within the stock market reveals clear internal changes. From 1990 to 1999, the top 30 stocks in terms of cumulative returns in Japan were primarily in the semiconductor, electronics, manufacturing, and consumer goods sectors. Leading companies included Rome Semiconductor, Tokyo Electron, Sony, and Honda. After 2000, the top 30 stock shifted to the consumer goods, manufacturing, industrial, and utility sectors, with companies like Mitsubishi, Japan Tobacco, Canon, and Chubu Electric Power leading the way. Subsequently, due to quantitative easing and negative interest rate policies, the financial sector's return also saw steady growth. Following the burst of the economic bubble, Japan's economic structure underwent significant internal adjustments. Concurrently, there has been a quiet rise in an alternative indicator known as the National Cool Index, abbreviated as GNC. Unlike the gross domestic product GDP, this index reflects cultural influence or soft power. Take, for instance, the passing of the esteemed manga artist Mr. Akira Toriyama in March of this year. His death elicited a profound global response, with people worldwide mourning his loss. This event underscores the significant influence of Japanese popular culture, including manga and gaming, on a global scale. These cultural influences have steadily grown since the burst of Japan's economic bubble. While present before, their impact wasn't as pronounced as it has become in recent years. Some observers in the United States have long noticed this phenomenon and have coined the concept of national cool to describe Japan's cultural rise after the burst of the economic bubble. Among the relevant commentaries, there is one particularly influential and representative article that was published many years ago in Foreign Policy magazine. Let's take a look at what this article has to say. The article titled Japan's Gross National Cool discusses how Japan underwent a profound transformation after the collapse of the economic bubble, transitioning towards a cultural economy. During the bubble era, Japan primarily competed with the world based on economic metrics like GDP growth, stock market performance, and per capita income. 
However, significant changes occurred in Japan post-1990s, including shifts in demographic alongside the burst of the economic bubble. The article highlights that Japan's birth rate has begun to decline, along with a decrease in the desire for children among Japanese couples. This trend has led to a rapid reduction in the number of children per Japanese family, resulting in a prevalent small family structure. With fewer children and smaller family units, this demographic shift has engendered a distinct population psychology. The younger generation facing reduced numbers has even witnessed the emergence of an unprecedented phenomenon, the prevalence of only children. As a result, Japan's new generation of youth tends to prioritize self-centeredness, pursuing self-worth, individuality, and independence, diverging significantly from traditional Japanese values. This entire generation of people affected by Japan's economic downturn has paradoxically become the vanguard of transforming Japanese popular culture. The article reads, a cultural superpower needs a healthy economic base, but not necessarily a healthy economy. Perversely, recession may have boosted Japan's national cool, discrediting Japan's rigid social hierarchy and empowering young entrepreneurs. It may also have loosened the grip a big business career track had over so much of Japan's workforce, who now face fewer social stigma for experimenting with art, music, or any number of similar risky endeavors. Japan's already flourishing popular culture became even more prosperous on its pre-existing foundation. Japan's pop music, animation, and film production created an enviable environment for other Asian countries. All of this occurred after Japan's economic downturn. In the article, the author also mentions that in 1998, although Japan has considered a powerful economic entity, its global cultural influence was evidently not as pronounced as it became after the 1990s. If Japan in the 1980s was an economic superpower, then post-1990s Japan became a cultural superpower. The changes in Japan before and after the economic bubble burst evoke parallels with a prominent work in sociology titled Children of the Great Depression. This book delves into how the 1929 Great Depression affected the life paths of young people in the United States. Despite the economic downturn causing substantial shifts in economic, social, and familial context, it paradoxically gave rise to a distinct psychological profile and a rebellious spirit among the new generation of Americans. As a result, a way of new artists, poets, writers, and others emerged. Notably, participants in the movements like the Beat Generation and the Hippie Countercultural largely belonged to the generation that experienced the Great Depression as children. The legacy of the children of the Great Depression is also evident in Japan's economic and cultural sphere post-1990s. Today, both consumers and creators of Japanese popular culture can be viewed as the descendants of those who weathered the Great Depression. Their influence has been profound, reshaping Japan's socio-economic and cultural landscape. Using Akira Toriyama's manga as an example, we can illustrate the generational divide following the collapse of the economic bubble in Japan. Although Toriyama had already produced notable works like Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball in the 1980s, the latter's comedic style prevailed during that era. However, it wasn't until the 1990s with the introduction of Dragon Ball Z that the manga truly achieved global iconic status. The Dragon Ball Z anime aired from 1989 to 1996 on Fuji television, coinciding with the economic bubble's collapse and the subsequent economic downturn in Japan. During this phase, coinciding with the burst of the economic bubble, Japan's pop music, anime, and gaming industry witnessed a surge in creative output. While Akira Teriyama himself may not have belonged to the generation affected by the Great Depression, the majority of his audience and consumers did. In 1989, the same year Dragon Ball Z debuted on Fuji television, manga artist Koyo Haru Goda Yoga was born, who later became the author of the immensely popular manga Demon Slayer Kimotsu Yaiba, exemplifying a typical child of the Great Depression. 
In essence, individuals born in the 1980s and 1990s in Japan all experienced the burst of the economic bubble during their childhood, effectively making them the children of the Great Depression era. According to a report from Nikkei Asia four years ago, demon slayer Kimotsu Yaiba generated economic benefits exceeding 200 billion Japanese yen, with sales surpassing 150 million copies. Similarly, the Dragon Ball series reached global sales exceeding 260 million copies in 2020 alone, when combined with all of Akira Teriyama's manga works and associated merchandise, the total economic impact is estimated to exceed 34 trillion Japanese yen. However, this economic scale only represents the anime industry within Japan's broader pop cultural sector. Other sectors such as pop music, video game design, and various entertainment industries have yet to be factored into these figures. These industries reflecting Japan's national cool and soft power have all experienced significant growth after the eruption of the Great Depression. The truth is, the bursting of Japan's economic bubble had a silver lining for its pop cultural scene, igniting creativity and providing a valuable opportunity. Without the Great Depression in Japan, the rich tapestry of Japan's pop culture we cherish today wouldn't exist, and Japan's national cool wouldn't have had the chance to thrive. So what does the concept of national cool really entail, and why has it gained such widespread popularity? Essentially, it strikes a chord with the people by tapping into the authentic inner values that individuals often find themselves losing touch with in today's modern capitalist societies. These values revolve around the intensity of of life experience and the depth of emotional connection, which the Japanese people rediscovered and began to embrace following the Great Depression. To grasp this concept, we must briefly reference the philosopher Jean Francois Lyotard, who dedicated himself to critiquing capitalism and drew inspiration from Nietzsche's philosophy. He argued that modern capitalism operates as a mechanized and in production apparatus, where individuals are reduced to interchangeable components devoid of intrinsic value. The goods churned out by this mechanized mass production lack uniqueness and are standardized. Essentially, capitalism's mode of production treats individuals as uniform components, prioritizing quantity over the depth and the richness of human experience. In essence, individuals within the capitalist production system are akin to lifeless tools, much like screws, devoid of desires and vitality. They become engulfed in the complex web of social relations losing the vigor of life. However, true value for human lies in experience that are vibrant and evoke deep resonance within the soul. In order to break free from the mechanized routine of everyday economics, Leotard introduced a unique concept known as the libidinal economy. Essentially, this concept suggests integrating the intensity of life and the individual's personal perception of the world into economic arrangement. Interestingly, Japan's pop culture, anime, and gaming industry seem to resonate with Leotard's libidinal economy. It's evident in the fast-paced, intense, and uniquely personal experiences portrayed in Japanese anime and pop culture products. This is what makes Japan's cultural economy so appealing. It also explains why in the realm of pop culture, Japan became a cultural powerhouse after the burst of its Islamic bubble. While the rest of the world was immersed in mechanized uniform capitalism, the Japan discovered the true value of an economy rooted in creative endeavors that awaken life's intensity and the perception of the world. Before the burst of the economic bubble, traditional capitalist production methods suppressed libidinal desires. However, with the collapse of the bubble, this suppression diminished. Japan then embraced a libidinal economy unique to its culture, represented by its pop culture, anime, gaming, music, and creative industries. This new libidinal economic system is what truly influences the world and is the core reason behind Japan's cultural ascent. After the 1997 Asian financial crisis, South Korea underwent a gradual transition towards the development of its cultural sector. This shift gave the rise of the widespread popularity of K 
K-pop in the 2000s, making a significant increase in South Korea's cultural influence compared to before the crisis. The Japanese experience could offer valuable insights and inspiration to the Chinese-speaking world, as many economies in that sphere are currently undergoing transitions. While Communist China itself may not be a contender due to its lack of innovation, places like Taiwan represent regions with the potential for cultural transformation during economic shifts. With Taiwan's conducive environment for creative freedom and social security, there is no reason it couldn't foster a cultural renaissance akin to Japan's. Why haven't the Chinese-speaking regions learned from Japan and South Korea, developing their own forms of soft power and a libidinal economy in pop culture? This question warrants further exploration in future discussions. Thank you for watching. Please like, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then.